Thank you very much. Um, I'm representing here UCLA Wireless Health Institute and UCLA in general. And within the Wireless Health Institute, we're really, really fortunate to uh, be able to bring together um, the UCLA David Geffen School of Medicine and uh, technical experience from the engineering school. And in our work, we typically try to combine um, our joint experiences in a way to create systems that can ultimately provide um, information for the decision makers to make informative decisions. Uh, Dr. Cooper earlier today uh, described one of our programs, uh, which is FASER, Physiological Health Assessment System for Emergency Responders. And I will use this system as an example of how uh, our approach works at UCLA. Uh, so uh, the first slide is, well, wh what is the band architecture that we typically use in uh, 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 phaser deployments? Uh, probably uh, you all recognize this architecture from being quite similar from, from some of the previous talks. And in this system, uh, we have a band architecture level, obviously, either uh, where the individual first responder uh, is collecting data at the um, at the, uh, during the training at the fire station or during the on-scene events. The data is aggregated in the BAN network and then transmitted over to uh, our secure servers via either the mobile link or via a stationary link such as a computer or other station that they may have in their disposal. Uh, the system is then uh, created in such a way that um, the link is bidirectional uh, in many of these applications such that feedback and guidance can uh, flow back to the individual first responder, whether uh, it is to their mobile device or um, uh, feedback that can be accessible via their password protected web pages uh, where they can then go back and um, look at some of their results. I will mention two of uh, the applications that use this network, uh, just for reference of um, two of the systems. One, one of the applications is uh, uh, the NetFit system, where the need for the system really stems from um, the identification of a problem that Dr. Cooper talked about, such as uh, lack of fitness and really a requirement or a need, critical need to create system which will be low cost, that will be networked, that will really reduce the barriers for the uh, first responders to uh, be active, know about their fitness and uh, be as engaged as possible. There are current standards within the first responder community, uh, fitness standards. However, for a variety of different reasons, it's difficult to uh, adhere to them. And so the system that we are trying to create is uh, aimed at helping individual firefighters to uh, both uh, assess their fitness and be guided um, in, in, in that process. Uh, from the band technology point of view, we using uh, state-of-the-art uh, sensors. Uh, in this example, Zephyr's bioharness is being used to collect motion data and heart rate data. This data is then uh, fused uh, on the mobile device, such as an Android device depicted on, on the slide, to uh, first of all create an individualized model of the individual that enables us to learn uh, their gait patterns and their heart rate response to those gait patterns. And then uh, this is then used either uh, for analysis of uh, first responders' performance while they're exercising on a treadmill, or having this model, uh, we can also allow them to perform the same kind of assessment while they are uh, walking or jogging or running uh, outside. And uh, what we're also trying to add right now is uh, assessment and monitoring of strength as well, which, which is uh, very important within the first responder context. Another system which provides different kinds of uh, different kind of feedback, but at the same time also relies on the same uh, architecture, is um, uh, deployment of advanced ECG validation. On this particular project, we are very fortunate to work with uh, Dr. Schlegel from uh, NASA JSC, and with his support, we have uh, developed a system where an ECG data is uh, acquired from the first responder. Uh, in, in the first instantiation, this data is acquired um, uh, during their off time in the uh, fire station. The data is then securely transmitted to our servers where it is made available uh, for analysis by the automated algorithms as well as uh, the access to this data is 
uh, made available to authorized personnel, such as our physician team, as well as uh, Dr. Schlegel. And uh, he has an opportunity to run some of his advanced TCG algorithms uh, to perform the analysis of, of this data. Then the uh, analysis performed by the phys physician team and uh, some of our automated systems is fused together and then provided to the individual first responders um, uh, in a form of a feedback. Just to give you a snapshot of what this advanced ECG reports may look like, uh, the, the, these reports are really user-friendly. And these are some of the snapshots of this data. But you can clearly see that uh, without too many medical terms or technical terms, um, uh, these two charts, for example, explain where this particular individual is located in space with respect to healthy individual or with respect to individuals with known cardiac problems. Another type of feedback that, that the system can provide is what is the uh, cardiac age, if you will, of this individual with respect to uh, other age groups as well as uh, some of the other diseases. And then ultimately, to make this even further user-friendly, uh, the information uh, down at the bottom is provided to the individual such that uh, it can be assessed where, you know, where within which population uh, the, the uh, information is um, analyzed. Switching gears a little bit, uh, there is also a significant need in validation of uh, the band systems within the domain of different applications. Uh, hence the phaser enterprise testbed system, which we are also working uh, uh, right now on. Phaser ET system is really developed for emergency responders as the first infrastructure for standardized testing and evaluation of equipment. Standardized in this particular case means that we are developing a platform th that can be used to test and evalu evaluate third-party vendor equipment that first responders may want to use. This does not mean that we are pushing a new standard necessarily, but when first responders are trying to make a decision what equipment will, uh, will, will suit their needs the most, they will be able to use this platform to evaluate multiple different uh, devices at the same time. Mobile testbed is, uh, is the, uh, one of the important parts of this end-to-end -end solution, and it is depicted, uh, one of the first systems is depicted on this slide. Uh, just a little bit of further uh, explanation behind this. As I mentioned, mobile testbed will be used to test and validate uh, third-party technology. And um, uh, this system can also be used for validation of environmental and inter-system interferences as well. So that if first responder is wearing a number, an ensemble of different radio and sensor technologies, then the data that we will be gathering on this platform can be used to determine which of these systems are most suitable for that scenario. Uh, implicitly, this same system can also be used to characterize structures and environments of concern, again, using the same principles of uh, data analysis uh, afterwards. I would also uh, like to mention that many of these concepts um, were inspired by our discussions with Professor Palavan, and we really indebted you for uh, your guidance on this. And I would like to mention that this system is really not meant to be deployed during missions, but really is developed to be used for validation. With this, I, I wanted to summarize uh, some of these points, and I was a little bit struggling on this slide because being an engineer, uh, I would like to obviously point out that there are so many different opportunities for us to develop new sensors, new communication devices, new localization sources, and so forth. And I believe that um, many of my um, uh, fellow panelists will actually raise other problems like this. But what I wanted to mention was that uh, it is incre incredibly important to also consider the interpretation of, of the collected physiological data. Right now we have many devices that can provide this data, but many of our, our physician friends tell us, well, but what can we do with it? And depending whom you provide this data, the kind of interpretation, the kind of the feedback and guidance uh, changes quite a bit. And so therefore thinking about um, interpretation of the data and automated subject guidance becomes important. Moving from monitoring to uh, detection and diagnosis of different conditions to ultimately intervention, treatment, and prevention of these problems. Uh, with this, I want to end, and thank you very much.